Naming and drawing conformational isomers, and there's some Newman projections too. Conformational isomerism is a sort of isomerism shown when a bond rotates. These are different conformers. A single bond is the, is the only point of rotation that you need to know, and that is a sigma bond. The IB seems excited that you know about things like ethane. Now, if you look along the carbon-carbon single bond, you can see that you have this arrangement, which is eclipsed, versus this arrangement, which is staggered. Now, this is the more stable arrangement. This arrangement has a lower energy. This bonded pair of electrons is repelling this bonded pair of electrons as well. So that one, not only is it repelling the ones on the carbon, it's also repelling the carbon-hydrogen bond on the other carbon. So using valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, this and this have to try and get as far away as possible. This is the higher energy configuration because they're closer together. Now, it's uh, pretty impossible to separate the ethanes that look like this from the ethanes that look like that, from the staggered, from the eclipsed, because the difference in energy is only very small. This is cyclobutane, and cyclobutane has ring strain. Now, there are two reasons why this is strained, this ring. I did have a joke to say here, but my wife said I couldn't. Notice here that the hydrogens on this carbon are eclipsing the hydrogens on that carbon. So this is inherently unstable. This is close to this. This bonded pair is close to that bonded pair. And also, these sp3 hybridized carbons, they would rather be in a tetrahedral arrangement, getting the bonded pairs as far away from each other as possible at 109.5 degrees. OK, that's at 109.5 degrees, but this is locked at 90 degrees. This is called ring strain, and this part of ring strain is called angle strain. The other part of the ring strain is this eclipsed hydrogen arrangement, which is called torsional strain. So how does the molecule resolve this? Well, if I put it down here, if I hold three and I bend up one, up. Now, this has relieved the ring strain. There is now less torsional strain, because if I bring this up, you can see that these hydrogens are now no longer eclipsed. They are staggered. But there is increased angle strain. The angles now are even less favorable to the sp3 hybridized carbon. Now, this process here is called ring puckering. Please, please mustn't make stupid jokes. Let's look at the IB definition for conformational isomers. They're formed by rotation around a sigma bond. And don't forget, all single bonds are sigma bonds. Let me draw out a molecule of ethane. Now, if you imagine looking along the carbon-carbon single bond... Hello, Newman. <laughs> what gives? So this is what's called a Newman projection. The diagram on the left is one extreme, and the diagram on the right is the other. Now it looks like it's the hydrogens that are far apart and close together, but it's actually the electron pairs that the hydrogens are bonded to the carbon with, not the hydrogen atoms themselves, it's the electrons. That's the staggered and eclipsed projections. The big circle is the rear, and that central connection is the front of the ethane molecule in this case. And we're in equilibrium. Now, don't forget, it is the electron pairs that are repelling according to Vesper theory. Valence shell electron pair repulsion. The electron pairs are repelling. Now, the lower energy is on the left, higher energy on the right. Lower energy is more stable. Things with a lower energy are more stable. And so the staggered is the more stable one. So you can remember that because staggered is stabler kind of overlaps like that. And we're done.